Hi, my name is Richard Devine. I'm an artist and electronic producer from Atlanta, Georgia. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I use Silo on three different sound sources. I've created some custom presets for each sound clip to showcase a wide range of different effects you can get with Silo. You can navigate with the chapter markers to skip to any preset in the video. Okay, so for this segment, I'm using Silo in a whole new session here, using three different sound sources, three isolated sound sources. The first one is just a, an 808 drum kit loop that I made. The second one is just a simple uh, Rhodes chord progression. And then the third sound is just a field recorded sound effect of a bunch of change dropping onto the cement. But I wanted to give you guys three examples of how Silo can be used to radically change these three different sources. So what I've done is I've prepared a couple of different presets that are gonna process each one of these sources to give you an idea of how much organic versatility you can get out of just this plugin on each one of these sounds. So uh, let's dive into it. So the first sound here is just uh, an 808 uh, loop. I'm gonna go ahead and just play that. So here we go. Pretty simple loop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start driving up the mix knob so you can hear slowly uh, silo processing the incoming audio. Here we go. See, it completely transforms this 808 loop. It almost sounds like it's just rattling around in this metal staircase um, while shifting the different grains around at different pitches. Um, and, and the speed through the buffer is just causing it to kind of intermittently play through different parts. It gives us this cool sort of really, really interesting effect. So I'm gonna just play through a couple of different presets that I've made here. So let's go to the next one. Here I'm using the Euclidean mass to travel through uh, all of the different uh, grains to give you this sort of like stuttering rotating effect. This one here is another one. Sort of a fast skipping, sort of glitching style of uh, granular processing using the shimmer and granular mode here in the spatializer. So you're getting sort of like this scatter and rotating effect. Um, fourth one here is using the rate set to tempo and also have the uh, size set to time. So the, you're hitting these, these intervals that are, uh, 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 the rate is hitting at sort of this slower in top, uh, uh, in time uh, rate to the master clock of the DAW, but the Euclidean mode's also running. You're getting these really cool sort of like step, sort of flangy, boxy space sounds, but very radical transformation from the original signal. Here, this is kind of like a grain scattering uh, uh, preset, where here I have the uh, playheads and, and the buffer, um, the track head moving kind of slowly, drifting, and it's, 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 it's the, the grain size is set. Um, really big, so it's getting this like scattering, spreading effect happening. I've got the spread at around 46%. Uh, so it's really, really interesting what you're hearing. And this one here is just a, a, another interesting, it's more of a, a, a simple sort of granulator where you could just scan through the grains here. With the cursor again. Sort of selective graining here. I wanna just bring that size down if we want. Get it really tight. It's always fun to do this. I'm going to spread it out again. I've got my speed set to zero, but we can just mess with that and change the, uh, the playback speed. If we want to have some fun, we could actually set some deviation, some randomization of all these parameters and see what happens. So now it's just kind of all over the place. This one's seven here. This one's another interesting one. 
Here I'm using the reverb in mask mode using the Euclidean, um, Euclidean feature here. So it kind of gets these, disperses, sort of drops these little um, sort of like spots of like reverb, like dark room reverb that scatters from speaker to speaker every now and then. Some really, really interesting textures. So here's number eight. So again, using the reverb and mask mode, and I'm using the balance uh, mix control to kind of get a, a wet and dry mix of what's happening with each of the grains that are moving around in the space. I have biologic and stereo set for my settings and geometry, but you kind of get these like the reverb kind of like is trying to come in, but the grains are chopping, and then it sort of clusters and fumbles itself into this this really interesting space. But you can see that we're radically, radically transform this loop into something completely different. So the next example I wanted to show you guys is using um, Silo on something that's completely musical. So let's try and see what happens on one isolated sort of uh, chord progression pattern using a Rhodes piano. So let's just hear what it sounds like completely dry. I'm going to turn on silo and I'm going to slowly bring up the mix so you can see what's hear what's happening. Here we go. So as I drive up the mix, you can hear that there's this nice pulsing movement in the stereo field. Um, and that's happening because in the geometry spatializer section, I have the mode ping pong selected, which allows me to add this movement between the grains, jump left and right in the stereo field, giving this really nice sort of almost tremolo effect. I'm going to play through a couple of different um, presets to here that I've created just for this particular chord pattern. You can hear how much range and versatility you can get here with it. There's another one called kind of more of like a CD skip in space is what I kind of call it. You notice that the buffer is just buffering on that first note. It's not allowing you to hear the other notes. You can do really cool things and almost create like new melodies uh, from existing melodies based on where the buffer position is playing at. It's very like dreamlike quality to it. That the reverb really, really adds that nice extra space. So here, preset number five, uh, a complete different change here. Now I have my uh, granulator uh, buffer size set all the way out at one fourth, and that the rate set uh, at, at pretty high as well. So you're getting this like sort of smearing, smothering effect of these the harmonies kind of overlapping each other. Um, really, really nice. And as you can see, got my spread set up. We're getting set it up even more drastic. Get this like detuned, warbled, like tape effect happening. There's just so much versatility that you can get out of this. There's preset number six. Another one that's at a, a higher pitch, kind of a shimmery, but there's more grains happening here. And the last example I was going to show you guys is a, um, a recording of just some change I did on a field recorder that I have, uh, my Sony. Uh, PCMD 100 and basically it's just a, a couple of quarters dimes and, and nickels just dropping onto the pavement so it's just a super dry recording uh, of that and that's what we are I'm going to play you just the clean example of what that is right here and then we'll do the same thing I will set the mix completely dry and then mix in the process signal so we can hear what it sounds like so right now this is what it sounds like
pretty simple. So let's go ahead and play that on loop and I'm then going to start mixing in siloed and hear how it processes the sound. Here I've set the pitch down a bit and the speed is also um, moving at, moder at a moderate rate um, in ratio mode. And I've got the size set at about one, 155. And the rate's a little bit slower, but you're getting sort of these chunks and pieces because I'm running the spatializer in granular mode. Uh, so you get these really cool chunks of stuff that it's grabbing, but then it's pitch shifting stuff down from the buffer. So you're getting sort of these these really weird sort of <laughs> uh, uh, almost rhythmic things happening. So here's another one where I'm using ping pong mode to kind of get this, and I'm also using the Ecladian mask to kind of get this to jump around the grain. So some of it's diving into the reverb because I have it set up in variation mode, um, but you'll hear this. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it hits on the right speaker, sometimes it's on the left. You get this really, really organic sort of like rhythmic things happening uh, out of material that wasn't really rhythmic to begin with. And then the third one here, this one's kind of fun. Sounds more like tinging impacts of metal. Uh, I've got the pitch set down to 12 um, and my rate set to 1 16th uh, and the size at 400 milliseconds. And the pretty mass is moving pretty quickly through the, the grains uh, in this one. And I've got the reverse set up just at 20%, so you're getting a little bit of the, the grains will come in reversed every now and then. And I've got my window size set at the sort of like sloped am uh, am um, amplitude shape. So you're getting some more of this less uh, sharper attacks and more stuff sort of seeping in. The fourth one here is kind of a crazy dark in a cave, <laughs> turning coins of doom. <laughs> um, so this one's using a much, much uh, slower uh, 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 rate. My rate, as you can see, is set down to one. My pitch is set down to 31. Uh, th but then I have my grain size set all the way open, so you're getting larger chunks of the buffer playing back to give you these bigger spatial um, chunks of the sound. But once again, completely transforms uh, the sounds of, or simple sounds of just change dropping on the ground. Here's one. It's a little more animated, a little more mu stuff going on. As you can see, my grain size here and my mask is set moving pretty quickly because my rate is set at 128. I could slow that down. It's a lot of fun that you can have, just even with the most simplest sounds. There's another one. Two set six. Here I've got the buffer size at about 435 milliseconds. Um, speed sets about one o'clock. About seven locations of the different grains moving around. Using the hollow tone reverb and the variation setting for the level on the, on the uh, reverb. Just got two more here. And number seven, this one's kind of like sounds like it's in a, in a, in a, in like a, 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 a sort of like a rattling metallic tank, which I thought was interesting. So I've got a uh, set rev tone for the reverb and the chance mode set to reverb. So you're getting these sporadic sort of. It almost sounds like, yeah, like you're in a, me a, a metallic hallway. Once again, completely transforming the sound altogether from what it originally was. The last one here is sort of a, another fun one. Speed here I have set at uh, 132. Grain size about 11 o'clock. And I have all the parameters for all four controls in the granulator uh, set to pretty high random values. So 
you're going to get a lot of random variation to give it a lot of organic pitching um, and the size of the grain is also going to be opening and closing which gives you a lot of really interesting timbers um, from what it was from this originally. So as you guys can see you can get a lot of really interesting timbres and textures out of Silo. Uh, it's become recently one of my favorite new granular plugins that I've been using lately uh, for a lot of my sound design projects uh, and a lot of my gaming projects. And also it's had a major part uh, in a lot of the work on my new uh, upcoming album. And uh, I have to salute everyone at Unfiltered Audio for letting me give it a chance to check it out today. I think this is one of the coolest plugins that's hit the market lately. As a big fan of granular synthesis and granular processing, this is hands down one of, one of the most fun uh, plugins I've got to use in a long time. So thanks, guys.